Hello, peoples of the world. I really need another joint before I do this show, <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. Welcome to my show about overcoming depression and how I overcame what I consider a major depression or at least setback in my own personal life years ago, not recently. I want to emphasize the good and the bad. Okay, just before before I get too deep in the uh, subject matter here, uh, realize that I'm not going to be even trying to look at the camera as best as I can here. Okay, check this out. This is there. There's not a simple solution to fixing people's lives and minds and social problems and shit like that. If you are suffering from depression, though, you might want to listen to my story and maybe you can take a few pointers tips, examples, and maybe what worked for me will work for you. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, I will say this, though. It took me a total of three years from 2015 to 2018 at some point. Uh, my method was basically reconstructing my entire life, like from day one of interactions I've had with a girl here and a couple girls actually it involved a lot of notepads and a lot of like basically reversing a lot of shit in my brain um, I looked I looked for as many old photographs as I could find uh, to gauge like mine and their state of mind and how they look in the pictures and all kind of shit that helps to glue things together but i think that our memories are the the most reliable our minds you know are the best recorder or whatever i think of of life experiences so i trust my memory more than i do a picture or a video or something like that actually but that's just me but uh yeah a, a big portion of me kind of just getting peace and closure and figuring things out uh, myself was just like uh, and I just now realize I'm not holding the fucking microphone Jesus Christ I wasted the first two and a half minutes of this show y'all probably didn't hear anything I was saying huh well anyway hey welcome back to the shimmy show this is my show should probably zoom the camera in and all that now huh this is my show about um, how I overcame depression, for about of my my three year, basically quest of finding answers and uh, feeling better and feeling, basically like I'm back in my own skin again. Okay. When you're when you're really 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 down in the dumps, depressed, you don't really know what it feels like to be you or the original version that you were before you were depressed that you don't it's almost like you don't recognize yourself in old photos and your old life doesn't look like it was even yours to ever begin with things can get so far uh, out of whack or whatever so one of the first things that I did to start becoming happier or at least sane or at least feeling like I'm back in my own skin and body again is just to, to remember back to a time when I wasn't depressed and when I was happy and to do more of whatever made me happier at that particular phase or point in my life even if even though as an adult now I'm talking about like my teenage years I would say by the way uh, age 15 16 is when I was like the most happiest or whatever so using that as a point of reference I started basically doing all this, this is a couple years ago, but even today, I still keep up the same routine, basically. I started doing all the stuff I did when I was 15 and 16. That included uh, pretty much playing the same video games. Uh, I still play, like, Sonic the Hedgehog and Mega Man and shit like that almost on a daily basis. 16-bit, 18-bit video games and stuff like that. Um, I go running every day, um, like I do every day here still. That makes me feel good. It makes me feel young. It makes me feel like Jimmy. So I do that. Um, I tend to wear more of the same clothes. You guys might notice I wear track suits almost all the time every day because that's what I did when I was 15, 16, and I was happy. You know, and uh, all that helps at least to restore a sense of my identity once you get lost or whatever 
in the world because you know when, when you deal with a lot of other people other people have a way of rubbing off on you the longer you know them the more of them like rubs off on you by osmosis you know it's like some of you rubs off on them some of you some of them rubs off on you you can't reverse this you can't change it every human that you pretty much interact with talk touch text etc they basically are altering your dna just by having a conversation with you every telemarketer every girlfriend every cashier every just human to human interaction it totally changes and alters your brain's chemistry and history forever 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 so if the source of your depression <laughs> is like in my case as a girl or whatever that you've known for a really long time then you got to kind of temporarily mute that voice and try to hear your own a little bit louder sometimes i guess so it's really easy to lose direction and focus of who you are when you're you know, you're just not in your own skin, I guess. That probably doesn't make much sense to most of you, but, you know, bear with me or whatever. So, to summarize a lot of these points, this is, again, this isn't, this is, should be a very long show, but I guess there's no need to drag it out. All that I personally did to feel happy again is I just started repeating my same routines. I got, I got into a daily routine, like I didn't go to school or anything like that, but I mean, I got into a daily routine of doing a set number of things like a computer program or a to-do list, you know, wake up, go running, go do this, go do cardio, go have your protein shake, go eat, go do some work on the computer, go do this, go do that, make some time for video games, do this, do this, do this, exercise again, do that. You know, it was like I, I followed a pretty, pretty rigorous, very mundane, boring type of schedule every day like i had almost the same at least every day the same 20 items to do on the checklist and occasionally some random ones would uh come in there and whatever but i spent a lot of time when i wasn't doing my routines or whatever i spent a lot of my time searching for answers going to libraries because libraries are free in the county you live in and if i couldn't find a certain book i'd look for it on ebook or amazon it or uh whatever used copies preferably you know you need to save all your resources and whatever for other things i think but finding answers are very important you know what i'm saying sometimes the, you know there's a book out there called the dsm-5 i think everybody should have it's like the book clinical psychologists or psychiatrists use to technically diagnose and whether you're crazy or sane or whatever anyway this book hardcover copy is over a hundred dollars used so if you see one for less than a hundred dollars you should probably buy it or whatever pdfs are available i keep a pdf copy of this shit on my phone at all times or whatever i like to know how people the the rubric they use for evaluating people that should determine whether they should be society determines they should be in a straight jacket in a fucking rubber room or should they be just roaming the streets with us or whatever you know i want to know what the actual definition clinical definition of fucking crazy is so I keep that DSM-5 on me, for real, and I start watching and look, going down the checklist of checklists to see if people are bullshitting or are they actually fucking bonkers or whatever, according to the book or whatever, is what it is, you know, and interestingly enough, do you probably, you guys are probably don't know this, but I've read a lot, a lot, a lot of psychology, psychiatry books over the last couple of years, most psychiatrists and psychologists and scholars and shit are Germans from Germany, just so that you guys know, almost like 90% of them, not just like Freud and Pavlov and all these other names you hear about and whatever, um, but almost all of them are German. I just thought that was very interesting or whatever, that they're the ones that set the standards for who's crazy and shit like that, but it is what it is. They do good engineering, so people say, you know, it is what it is. So, um, yeah, man, fighting depression. Hmm. Speaking of fighting, <laughs> sidetrack, sidetrack. There's, there's, there's this thing uh, in Asia called fighting. What's, what did the girl tell to me once? Uh, okay, okay. I'm in Thailand a couple years ago, right? This is after I'm pretty much after the depressed phase or whatever, right? It's early in the morning and I'm doing a YouTube show, one of these old shimmy shows from a couple years ago or whatever. And it's early in the morning. 
girl walks in the room, sees me like ranting at the camera, laptop or something like that, and she walks by and looks at me for a second and says, Oh, you fighting social. And she looks at me and then just keeps on walking and goes to the kitchen to like make an omelet or something like that for us or whatever. And I thought about it, that though her words stuck with me, fighting social. And I said to myself, why the fuck am I fighting social? She, she, makes, she brings up a very good point. I'm in Thailand. I got a girlfriend. She's cooking for me, doing, doing things for me. I'm feeling good. I'm overlooking the beach. I got the ocean, the salt, sea salt, air, coconut trees, and all this shit. Why am I fighting social? Shouldn't she, in other words, in her mind, she's saying to me, I should be happy that I am where I am right now, enjoying the moment, living in the moment with her, but instead I'm ranting at my camera or whatever. Fighting social, like as in fighting on social media, I guess they call it in Asia. So that stuck with me, actually. So I said to myself a lot of times, you know what, I spent, I churn and burn up a lot of energy unnecessarily while I'm fighting social. But somehow I feel that it's necessary to often defend myself and whatever and whatever, because some fucks out there just want to get into it with you and they want to like take shit to the next level or whatever, right? So I've been trying to curb my fighting social or whatever, but I'm human, okay? I eventually, eventually, if someone's a big enough of a fucking pain, I'm gonna engage the target, okay? So whatever. That's that fighting social shit aside, though. I could sp I could be a lot more productive and constructive by trying to use my channel and stuff for.